Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 7, Part 3 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, presenting further related information about the laws of compensation and focusing on the metaphor of reaping in proportion to what is sown. The session was recorded on the 12th of December 2017 from 11 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Examples demonstrating proportionate compensation. So in this section of our session, I'm going to be discussing with Jesus some real life kind of examples that help us understand the truth that compensation is always attributed to our soul in a proportionate matter, mat, manner, sorry, in terms of how, however much we sow, we will reap proportionately hmm. to whatever it was we sowed. So um, we've got four main areas that I want to raise with you. Mm -hmm. uh, firstly is about our response to fear. Mm -hmm. And in each of these examples, we're going to look at it from uh, an, a sparing and abundant perspective. Oh, yeah. it, right. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. we're going to look at what happens if I have a certain response to fear in a very strong manner and then uh, conversely in yeah. a small manner. Uh, the second is attitudes to giving. So mm -hmm. generosity versus being stingy. stingy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> personal intention and aspiration. So here we're looking so doing at things with passion and desire. Committed versus, from a heart perspective versus, versus hesitant like, oh, and stepping forward, forward, back, or, step forward, back, yeah. that kind of thing. Yep, complacency yep. or whatever. Yep. yep. And the final one is actually taking personal action out of a sense of desire. Mm -hmm. versus doing things out of a sense of duty. Right. Yeah. Which is very common on earth, so I thought it's worth talking yeah, about. Yeah, duty, a little. sacrifice, all those things are yes. very common, aren't they? Yes. Mm. Yeah. All right. So happy with that? Mm -hmm. Let's yeah, get going. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Proportionate compensation applied to fearlessness and change. Mm. What proportionate compensation will I receive if I act courageously to challenge my fears? And eventually, of course, that would lead me to a state of becoming fearless. Hmm. Well, um, I suppose we need to say, firstly, with all of these examples that we're giving, we need to understand that what we're listing here is not an exhaustive list of all of these things, that no. benefits or drawbacks, you know. So that's right. With our just a brief discussion of the topic just to give our listeners an opportunity yep. to understand what I would classify as the effects of uh, positive behavior yeah. or loving behavior and the drawbacks of <laughs> loving behavior yeah and uh, and if we can understand the the both both, both sides, sides of the coin yeah. as the saying goes then we're more armed to make wise decisions and choices in That's our right. day to day life. But as you say, it's just impossible to define or describe all of the compensatory effects that are happen in our life, placed upon our soul and all those things, because they're actually so intricate, aren't they? They are, and there's often hundreds of them. Yes. Um, and, and remember Thousands. that God's laws are measuring our thoughts and our desires and our emotions and our actions and our intentions all at the same time. Yes. And quite often when we engage a certain behaviour, we've had thoughts, we've had emotions, we've had beliefs, we've had a, a lot of things combined mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, to actually cause that behaviour. Yeah. And of course, the law of conversation is operating upon, upon each individual thing. Yeah that triggers or causes that behavior. Yeah. And so we need to understand that, you know, mm -hmm. before we sort of go through all of these different examples yeah. <laughs> and think that we're listing some kind of definitive, you know, list, definitive or, yeah. list or something, yeah. you know, of what's yeah. going on. All right. So, that being said, in yeah. answer to the question about courage versus fear. Well, first we're just talking about what it's like if I am courageous, if I do challenge my fears. Mm. So my, what my attitude is in that case, because um, compensation is always acting on attitude, isn't it? Always. And then, so we'll talk about the attitude in each aspect, and then we will talk about what the proportionate compensation will be. Yes. Keeping in mind 
that all of the compensation we list is always going to be proportionate to the amount that I embrace this attitude that we described. Mm, that's so, right. If I just do this a little bit in a few areas of my life, I'm courageous here and there, yeah. then I'm only going to have, you know, it's almost like doing it that much and that's the amount of compensation I'll have that's that right. we're going to list the positives of the yeah. compensation. Whereas if I decide that's it, wherever there's fear in my life, I'm going for it, I'm challenging it, I'm going to be courageous, I'm going to listen to truth, not to fear, um, and that's like, whoa, so much in my life, mm. then I'm going to have those effects. Yeah, you see some people do that, yeah, actually. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, where their life changes significantly. So, so this is one of the benefits, but we're yeah. going to do the benefits <laughs> afterwards, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. So, so let's, let's look, look at, at the attitudes. The attitudes. Yeah. So, so, so the attitudes first is, obviously, I have a very strong desire to live in harmony with God's love and truth. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your fear can be very destructive sort of emotion. And if you listen to it, 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 it often will dominate your life yeah. and dominate your thoughts and dominate everything in your life. So the fact that you're not listening to it anymore. Because it opposes yeah, love and truth, course, doesn't it? Of course fear. it does, yeah. yeah. And it's direct opposition to yeah. love and truth. So a lot of people justify their fears, mm. but, but the reality is fear is in direct opposition to love and truth. So if I'm in not listening to my fear anymore, even though I have it, yeah. I'm basically demonstrating that I really want to love, you know, or really want to love the truth and love and do the loving thing you know yeah. and, and that i have a very strong desire to do it because i'm willing to feel fear while i do it yes and that, that's a very very positive thing so i want to be in harmony with god's laws with god's <clears throat> love and as you mentioned i actually it demonstrates that i want to love myself i want to love others i want to love mm. my environment because mm. i'm not listening to fear i want to go for love yep I honour truth. I honour truth. I desire yeah. to be governed by love rather than fear. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, actually. Yeah. And you can see why there are so many really good rewards yes. for taking those that yeah. kind of action. All right. So, proportionate to how much I'm doing that, this is the kind of rewards I'm going to have. What are they? Well, as I mentioned just before, one of the first things is my life will change for the positive very yeah. rapidly. Yeah. Very rapidly. Yeah. If I em embrace and deal with each fear and let, let it go and still go ahead with my desires, my life will change significantly in a very short period of time. Mm. So, so any person whose life isn't changing rapidly mm -hmm. is not doing this. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. Quite, quite obvious. Yes. Yeah. Now, of course, a lot of people don't want their life to change rapidly, <laughs> <laughs> which is what fear dictates. Fear. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, my suggestion is if you want an interesting life, have it change rapidly. <laughs> and also the other thing I notice about fear is not only uh, when we live in it, uh, life doesn't change very much, but life gets small, very, very small. Yes, because it's like a prison walls that yeah. continuously get smaller and smaller and smaller. And we end up sort of feeling constrained unable to even move without being one of our fears being triggered yes. and because we're honoring fear yeah we can't let one of our fears be triggered that's either that's right yeah. that's right so when we have this opposite attitude our the scope of our life expands mm. it, it, suddenly we're engaged with all different things with all different kinds of people with all different kinds of experiences and with we all do different a lot. We get pleasures a lot done. and <laughs> yes so much happens so yeah. much creation happens as and well and it's not done because we're driven it's done we're not willing it's done because we're yeah. not afraid anymore yeah. Yeah. to do it <laughs> that's right that's right okay so we expand in scope yep I can express my real self and my personality mm -hmm. better. Yeah. See, see, a lot of times our personality and our real self is buried under our fears. Yeah. And frequently we're very timid and shy and, and yeah. reserved and all of these mm -hmm. aspects of what we call our personality and not our personality at all. That's right. They're actually our fears being yeah. expressed and lived by. Yes. And, and once we have courage, we no longer live that way and we discover a lot about ourselves. And, and also another advantage is that other people discover a lot about us now. Yes. They don't have to work hard to know yes. us. And what, what I find very frustrating nowadays is having to work really hard to just find out a little bit about someone because yeah. they don't want to be open and expressive yeah. about who they are. Yeah. And, and that is a result of fear as well, yeah. lack of courage. So yeah. ca having courage will mean that other people don't have to work so hard to be in our company. Yes. And therefore, they can enjoy our company more. And we enjoy <laughs> theirs. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we're more present and more connected. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This one I love. 
because the opposite of what you think when you start to challenge fear. Yes. But you actually end up feeling, and quite quickly, this grows and grows, but you start to feel more safe, more secure in your life, more security. Yes. You, you feel more supported by God's laws, really, don't you? Yeah, because you're releasing the fear that governs your life. You now no longer believe a whole heap of false beliefs about yeah. life. Like be afraid, be like very be afraid. afraid, don't go Everything, outside. Something yeah. bad is going to yeah. happen and yeah. it's all going to be bad and all these kind of things yeah. that we're taught to believe. Yeah. You realise after a while, well, actually, you hardly have to worry about anything at all. Yes. If you engage everything lovingly, you don't have to worry about anything at all. Yeah. And so, and so you know, you, you, you start and you start living your life that way. Mm -hmm. it, it really it increases the safety and security of your life, actually. Yeah. And of course, the law of attraction has to work upon a person who's fearful to bring them fearful events to see that actually <laughs> being in fear doesn't prevent the, fe the fearful events, right? Yes, yeah. And once that's happened and you've released all that and have courage, those those attractions don't need to occur anymore either yeah. in order to trigger the fear. Yeah. And so now, you, you know, you have less and less fearful events occur in your life yeah. as well. Mm. Awesome. Um, there's all there's lots of more positive things we could list there, but and not just positive for ourselves and our quality of life and our enjoyment of life, but also for all of God's creations, for uh, for our brothers and sisters, for uh, yeah. you know, for everyone. Our fear is a, a fear is an, a very uh, you could it's a black energy mm -hmm. that gets put upon everybody. Yes. And when I say a black energy, if you could see it in the spirit world, it is a very dark grey black type color mm. um, that gets imposed upon others. And if a person's open to fear, you can see. Like if I, if you're open to fear and I'm afraid and I'm trying to make you afraid of the same thing I'm afraid of, yeah. you can see a bright person's heart and, and mm. their, their aura slowly turning into black yeah. as you're talking yeah. even. And it's such a, it's a, such a destructive emotion actually. Yes. And we need to st stop living by it and just release it yes. and stop, stop trying to transmit it to others. You see yeah. this happening a lot in the world today where we're trying to transmit fear to others and, and and we're not trying to transmit courage yeah to others yeah. and and the person who's willing to live in a state of courage transmits courage to others yes and this is this has a very buoyant effect on the souls of others yeah 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 well let's now talk then about proportionate compensation mm -hmm. applied to acting and living in fear mm -hmm. which is really the flip and you've started to talk about what that's like mm -hmm. but let's just talk about proportionate compensation in that way so what proportionate compensation will i receive if i choose to live in fear and take no loving actions well let's look at the attitudes that have to be corrected and then we'll see what compensation we're probably going to get, right? <laughs> Obviously, when I'm when I'm living in fear or I honor fear, I'm basically resisting God's truth. Mm. I'm not having any faith in God's in God's universe that God has created a loving universe, mm -hmm. and I don't have any belief in the truth of that. Mm -hmm. Now, now that's a very substantial thing that I'm doing because yeah. basically everywhere I look in life, I'm going to be st seeing the opposite of truth. Mm. I'm going to be seeing what I believe is going to happen rather than what God knows is going to happen, yeah. right? And, and this is going to have a very big impact upon me emotionally if I allow this attitude to fester and develop. Mm -hmm. I'll have a lack of desire to love God myself or others mm -hmm. because it, basically fear says, if I've got the option of loving God but you don't like it then mm -hmm. and you're going to be angry with me, I'm going to not love God. Yeah because I'll just be afraid of you yeah. if I do. Yeah. And also I have a tendency then to abuse other people mm -hmm. because it's like, oh, if I'm afraid of him and you and I are with that person, I'm just going to do what he wants, yeah. right? I'm not going to can be connected to you. Yes. So what, what am I going to do? I'm going to do what the unloving person mm -hmm. that I'm afraid of wants rather than do the loving thing. So right? fear and fearful or unloving people end up being in charge of my life. Yes, yeah. and not only in charge of my life, but I honour them. Yeah. I, I, I pander you to give them. them I power. give them power. Yeah. I, yeah. I do a lot of things to yeah. which are harmful to myself and to them. Yes. By the way, and because of my lack of courage. Yeah. So that that is going to have a terrible effect on my life. Yes, and another thing that I noted here was that I feel entitled to control and manipulate others. Yep. 
and do whatever it takes to, to save my fear. Save my fear to, to not save feel me my from fear. feeling it. Yes. Yeah. So I will resort to some fairly serious, either overhanded or underhanded techniques. Manipulative. Just to get away with. Yep. I'll, not sensing I'll revert fear. to anger if yep. necessary. Yep. I'll be manipulative. I'll be controlling. Yep. I may even murder. Yeah. <laughs> because of fear. Yeah. Right. That's how severe it is. It's a yes. huge problem on the planet. Yeah. You know, all the wars of history are caused yeah. by fear, actually, yeah. because everyone's afraid of being taken from and afraid of what that's going to mean for them and afraid yes. of their future. And, and yeah. so they're willing to fight, you know, kill other people for it. You mm -hmm. know, they, it, it's all caused by this underlying fear that exists. Yes. And so fear is a very, very destructive emotion. And as such, God's laws are going to God's law of conversation is going to operate intensely yes. to correct it. Yes. Fear is a very destructive emotion. So let's look at... The Can I also mention oh, a lack yes, of faith, again, in yep. God's goodness and in God's laws? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we humans have this arrogant belief mm -hmm. that God's made a huge amount of mistakes. Yeah. If they believe in God at all, yeah. they believe that God's made a huge amount of mistakes, you yeah. know, with the yeah. way God created the universe. Like, God's intelligent enough to create a body, but not intelligent enough to create some nice laws that govern it, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's the way we see it. So we see God has made this all these terrible mistakes and terrible systems of things <laughs> that we're now just bearing the consequence of, that God's some kind of idiot, yeah. even though God is obviously highly intelligent yes. enough to create yeah. some of the com most complex, well, the most complex being in the universe is us, yeah. and, and God's able to create us mm -hmm. so god must be highly complex and highly intelligent mm -hmm. and yet we believe that god's stupid enough mm -hmm. to put us in a universe where laws are not loving and and yeah. and we'll be traumatized by the yeah, yeah. by the <laughs> <laughs> result of living in this universe that this crazy god who was intelligent in one hand but yeah. not intelligent in the other yeah and such a, a an idea or concept is ludicrous when mm. you think about it but that's what we're living that's, in. That's what we believe. When we live in fear, we just lack faith in any goodness or any care or any safety or anything wonderful or any potentially positive outcome. Yes. Just nothing. No. Yeah. And, and we are basically believing the worst of God. Yeah. So a relationship with God obviously is one of the compensation <laughs> drawbacks. We're not yes. going to have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because we're projecting all this rubbish. Yeah. We're actually... If you think about it, we're actually blasphemous yeah. towards God's nature yeah. by living in fear. Yeah. We're yeah. blasphemous towards God's nature. Yeah. So it's something we need to take good, firm steps to correct. Mm. And mm. God's laws, the law of compensation, takes firm steps to correct yes. our fear. Yes. Yeah, so let's, because very often I hear people focus on, uh, oh, yes, I acknowledge my, oh, not very often, but occasionally people say, yes, I was angry and that wasn't a loving state to be in or yes, you know, it wasn't nice to be in my addiction or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, but very, very, very few people say, I was afraid and that was a huge lack of love on my path. Mm. And yet, as you just Usually said... Usually they say, I was afraid, and that was a huge lack of love on your part. Yeah. <laughs> or poor me, I was afraid. Like, what could I do? Yeah. You what know? else could... What choice did I yeah. have? <laughs> it was terrible for me, yeah. all that fear. What could I do? Yeah. So, um, what you are saying, though, what I wanted to pick up on was the fact that, no, it's a state of un lack of love. We are resisting... And not just a small lack of love. No, it's a big one. It's one of the biggest on the planet it's, and, and the biggest inside of each individual. Yes. So we're talking so about biggie, severe lack of love. Biggie. And so proportionate compensation is going to be a biggie, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's going to be a biggie. A biggie, a lot of compensation. A lot of compensation. A lot of trying and, to correct And we could us. go for a day and list all the yes. conversation from fear. But. So I've listed one, two, three, four, <laughs> five. So let's do them. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Um, and you've already touched on a lot of this, but living in fear leads to a limited experience and unhappy life. Yeah. That's, that's in and, and it's a limited experience for myself, but it's also a limited experience for other people who interact with me. They're not interacting with the real me anymore. Yeah. They're just interacting with my fear. 
and any kids I have, gee whiz, they're not going to, they're going to not only imbibe my fear, they're going to, every time I feel afraid, I'm going to give up on loving them. And, and they'll try and manipulate my fear to get yeah, what they want. So that'll worsen their <laughs> condition and they'll be able to because all I want to do is avoid fear. Exactly. And so, wow, it's not a good situation for no. anyone I interact with, really. Because even if I've got a husband or a friend who's willing to manipulate my fear and I'm not going to Or willing feel to pander it, to it. Or willing to pan, well, you say you're willing to pander to my fear, that darkens both our condition. Mm -hmm. You willing to manipulate my fear, darkens both our condition. Mm -hmm. It darkens the condition on the globe, basically. Exa exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's one of the worst emotions to leave within you. Yeah. And and what I see is most people are still justifying leaving it within them. Yes. And and you can see why in the spirit world God does not allow that. Yeah. You know. But humans allow that on earth, you know, in fact, everyone on earth basically agrees with this mm -hmm. concept of mm -hmm. you're afraid, so go and kill somebody, you know, you're yeah. afraid, so go and have an abortion. Yeah. You're afraid, so, you know, get rid of the guy or you're yeah. afraid, so, you know. So it's not worth it. Whatever unloving whatever. thing it is that is justified by yes. this fear. And it seems to get worse and worse. Like we, There's a huge demand in the Western world that everything should be comfortable. Yeah. Everything should be just smooth. And if it's not... There's just like huge problems. Yeah. And that's why there's such little innovation in our society because innovation can be uncomfortable. Leadership can mean facing fear. You have to challenge these. It's also why there's so much environmental destruction. Exactly. Because nobody, everyone's too afraid yes. to actually make the changes, like giving up eating meat, for example. Yeah. But changes similar in nature to that. Everyone's too afraid to make. Yes. So, so they justify living in these places of fear only to cause more degradation to the planet than yeah. the next generation of people. You know, it's just a sub subsequent problem yes. for the next generation of people. Yeah. We're going to get to the stage, if we don't stop it, mm -hmm. that you can't even breathe on the planet, let alone drink or, yeah. or eat. Yes. And so, you know, it's a very, very destructive place to be and, and, and something that we need to address like yes. urgently. Urgently. Mm. And every time or in every way that we say, no, I'll listen to fear, we contribute to this worsening problem. That's right. Whether we can see it or not, and God's laws dictate that yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah, we contribute to the wars. We contribute yes. to the famines. We contribute to yeah. all of the destructive things that are happening on the planet. We yes. contribute to them by, yeah. by engaging and not releasing our fear. Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a very severe problem. And, and God's viewpoint towards it is very firm. Yes. You know, you don't see God ever go, oh, there, there, you've got, a fe <laughs> yeah. you've got fear, so I'm going to let you get away with that. <laughs> and wouldn't that be condescending of God to say, oh, it's too hard for you? Yeah. You know, you poor thing, you can't cope. Oh, well, just leave it in you. It'd no. also be God's admission that God was not very good in exactly. designing us. Exactly. That's what I love that God goes, hey, I made you. I you made can you. Do you can it. handle yeah. anything. Get rid of this fear, yeah. guys. <laughs> Tick tock, compensation's working here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All yeah. right. Um, we mentioned this a little bit in the previous kind of on the flip side example, mm. which was feeling when I'm choosing to live in fear, I feel unsafe and insecure mm. all the time. Yeah. You live in a state almost of perpetual uh, worry, terror and dread. Yeah. And I, and I see most people we meet live in this state in yeah. different ways. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's a, it's a terrible state to live in. I used to live in it. Yeah. And I know what it feels like. It's just terrible waking up every day, worrying about every day, yeah. worrying every time you go to bed, not being able to sleep very well. Yeah. All, all these different things, you know, just fear is a, is yes. a dominant characteristic. Yes. Um, we also make ourselves dependent. This mm. is something that I don't think many people think about when mm. they live in fear. We become dependent on other people's choices and their actions in order to feel a bit okay. Mm. You know, we, 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 unless everything everyone is doing is all right and not triggering my fear, then I'm not okay, I'm not happy, I'm completely unhappy. And so we're basically placing the control over our happiness in the hands of other people. Yeah. And that's an incredibly insecure place to live, actually. Yeah, because now it's not your desire or your passion or your... You're not in charge. You, you're not even in charge of your life anymore. No. And, and the trouble is this kind of spirit also draws spirit people to yes. our lives as well who are willing to dominate our lives. And we yeah. see this growing trend on the earth 
of people becoming overcloaked completely with spirits yes. and, and changing their name completely and yeah. becoming exactly what the spirits want them to be. Mm. And that's all the result of their personal fear that they're not choosing yeah. to feel. Yeah. It's very, very destructive to their life. And they frequently leave relationships immediately and go off and have affairs and, you know, all these other things mm -hmm. are all influenced by this kind of fear-based yeah. fear thinking. Yeah. Mm. I justify harming others and I harm others frequently. Mm. Because I've always got a justification. My fear mm -hmm. is more than my love. Yes. My, my fear of what that person is more than I love you. Yeah. So yeah. I am willing to harm you if that person is, if is I'm going to threaten me in yeah. some way. Yeah. If I'm afraid. And that very state within me which says oh, I'm not feeling fear, I've made that choice and my dis that decision means that I am harming things all around me all, all the, the time. time. All yeah. the time. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. And like we could go on and on about this topic. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, we could go on all day. Yeah. It's still not be finished. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe a final point I can make about that is that um, all of the compensatory results will be proportionate to the extent of my willingness to justify living in fear and my desire to avoid experiencing it so mm -hmm. that means if i choose to listen to the messages of fear and act in accordance with fear every day of my life then every day of my life i'm going to be unhappy and i'll cause a lot of unhappiness for other people every day for which i will also have to compensate yes yes right. um but if i choose to act in fear in only certain areas of my life but i don't have much fear in others then the compensation is going to be in um, those areas. In those areas, I'm still going to have um, a negative or a corrective compensation for the underlying condition in my soul, mm -hmm. which says it's okay to avoid fear. So the justification of fear. The justification of fear. Mm. It's just that I don't have it in every area, but I do have this problem that no matter where the fear is, I still think it's okay to justify it, which is a serious problem. A very serious problem. So this is why some people who are seemingly fearless in a lot of areas, but do have certain fears that they are steadfastly avoiding, receive some pretty serious proportionate compensation because their underlying condition says, well, fear can't be felt. Yeah. 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 And that was a distinction I wanted to make because sometimes it seems like... Um, uh, uh, people are relatively free of fear, but the, well, there's, no, I, I can't, I can't well, finish yeah, that statement it, really. As soon as you agree. step away from God, yeah. it's very, very hard yes. to be fear, free of fear. Yes. Fear comes up because you no longer believe the truth. Mm -hmm. Truth and fear, truth is the antidote to fear. Mm -hmm. And if you truly feel the truth in your heart, that's the antidote to fear. Yes. But to do that, you've got to get rid of the fear in your heart. Yes. And yeah. that, that's why where most people, yeah. mo for most people, fear is the emotion yeah. that is the worst emotion to feel yeah. for most people. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a huge problem mm. on the planet, mm. uh, as I've stated. Yeah. And, and it's a terribly, terribly destructive yeah. problem as well. Yeah. And we need to start seeing that God does not have compassion for fear, mm. really. No. God, God has compassion for how we got to the state yes. of fear, you know, through a lot of terrible choices and behaviours and so forth. Mm -hmm. But but you choosing to leave fear within you, yeah. from God's perspective, that is one of the most damaging things you could do, not only to yourself, mm -hmm. but also to others. Yeah. And, and so God's law of compensation is working very, very correct, you know, very strongly and uh intricately yes. to correct you yeah and you need to understand that yeah yeah absolutely but we it is fair to say that there's proportionate compensation every area in my life where i listen to fear mm -hmm. i'm going to be compensated very firmly to try and correct that attitude yeah areas where i'm fearless or i challenge fear or i'm courageous there's going to be very quite positive yeah. and um substantial compensation yes but as you mentioned when we have the attitude that it's okay to avoid fear it's pretty much a biggie <laughs> it's a big well problem. it's highly likely we'll put that attitude exactly. towards a lot of different yes. types of events and a lot of yes. different situations 
and and quite likely that we'll act very unlovingly in every one of those situations we put it towards. That's right. And we'll justify it in others. Yes. Which means that if, say, I'm not afraid of heights, but you're afraid of heights, but I think you, know, you can't feel fear, then I'm going to encourage in you, oh, you, you, poor person. you should never challenge that fear that, of heights you know. or whatever. Yeah. 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 And, it, and it's very destructive yeah. uh, on a support in, in supporting another in their fear. Yeah. 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 So okay. yeah, well, we can't sort of emphasise enough this mm. problem of fear. It mm. is a very destructive emotion on the planet. Yep. And the reason why we've included it in this discussion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Proportionate compensation applied to personal generosity. What proportionate compensation will I receive if I give gifts freely and out of a sincere desire to love others? Mm. Well, here we're looking at attitudes that are very nice, aren't they? Uh -huh. they, they it's a generous spirit, Des desire to give without the need to receive. Uh, is a very generous spirit. So it's, a, it, it's an act of love, a pure act of love, if we desire to give without receive. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as such, we're in a lot of harmony with God's laws here mm -hmm. now with, of love. So naturally, a lot of our attitudes must also be quite good when mm -hmm. we do this. Yeah. You know, so a desire to give my personal resources, my time, my energy, my effort, to another without mm -hmm. any expectation of a return yeah. is, 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 is a large amount of the gifts that we're possible, possible to give to, them, to another. Now, I don't see this happening much at Christmas time. <laughs> That's <laughs> which, interesting because we're, we're filming in December. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, because what I see is a lot of expectation to receive yeah. and therefore it's not harmonious with this generous spirit yes. or attitude. Yeah. Mm. But when we do have this truly, sincerely generous attitude, uh, we're very much in harmony with the way God is with us and mm. the operation of the way God's laws op, um, act in our life mm. and God's love itself. And so that in itself is we've aligned ourselves with God's attitude in a way, and yeah. that's quite a significant attitude change to have isn't it it, it is yeah. and and if we've had that attitude change in every aspect of our life financially as well as mm -hmm. spiritually and emotionally and physically then it's going to have some pretty positive outcomes in yeah. our life yeah. you know we're, we're basically desiring to improve the life of others we're desiring to improve the world we're we're lacking selfishness mm -hmm. we're, we're willing to give to others yeah. freely yeah. Um, we're acting in harmony with all the laws of love and in harmony with god's truth naturally there's going to be some pretty good rewards. Yeah, it's a know. nice attitude yeah, to have. Yeah, it's a great attitude to have. So let's look at the proportionate compensation that would be applied. So firstly, the benefits are not only for the person that I give to directly, are they? No. But the, it, I create a flow-on benefit. This is, this is the way with any gift, and I love that about gifts, mm. is that there's a, I give a gift if it's a sincere gift, it doesn't just benefit you, but it benefits every other person associated with you. It's like a system. Mm. You know, when mm. I truly give to a system, no matter what that is, a natural, like an environmental system or a human system, a societal system, there's always flow on benefits for other aspects of the system. That's right. Now, is that an aspect of compensation? Yes, of course. It's yes. A, you know, there's always going to be positive reward yeah. that, not, that, that far exceeds our original gift. Yes. And that's the beauty of the gifts from, that come from the law of compensation. Yeah. Because they, they, they sort of, you could say that they have a multiplying effect yeah. upon the receivers. Mm. So you give something to one person, that can even just engender in the heart of that person a desire to give similar things to others. Yes. And, uh, and that naturally has a flow on effect. Yep. And therefore, part of the compensatory reward for you is that this person went ahead and did other things, did good things to others because of the good thing you did for them yeah. and so forth. Yeah. And uh, that would not have happened, perhaps, if you hadn't have done the original good deed. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be happier, basically. <laughs> Whether you believe it or not, you're actually going to be happier. Well, we're happier on so there's there's a there's a greater deal of spiritual happiness, a greater deal of emotional happiness, 
we're going to have less disease in our own body. Mm -hmm. So naturally that's going to make us more happy ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and then there's, you know, there's sort of a avenues of happiness in every aspect of mm -hmm. our life that I see from physical, sexual, emotional, spiritual, you mm -hmm. know, all of these areas, if we're generous, yeah, like, and I don't mean with sexual generosity to be generous <laughs> with everybody there, but I mean, if we're generous with our partner there, yeah, um, naturally we're going to receive a lot of benefits, yes. personal benefits of that. Yes. And that is in the way that it, as I mentioned, impacts <clears throat> upon the system. And you've mentioned like we might inspire generosity in others and people might be attracted to our generosity because people can sense when it's a true generosity. Where it's not, where it's something not being demanded. Demanded, often. yes. Mm -hmm. um, but also just God's law of compensation is operating upon our soul condition, our home in the spirit world, our, you know, there's, there's a, there's a unburdening or a, a, there's a lack of burden really within us, isn't there, when we're giving. And and so there's so many benefits like personally and then in the way that you impact the system and it comes back to you. Yeah. You often end up with more personal wealth or resources. Um, well, it might not be physical wealth, but... No, but resources or even just uh, emotional joy and... Uh, yeah, well, you know, you, you have the personal confidence that you're doing mm. a good thing. Self-worth. So your self-worth gets built Yes. as well. Yeah. There's there's so many ways in which uh, we could... Again, you yeah. could probably list hundreds of ways you here. We're, yeah. we're encouraging the generosity of others, that people are attracted to us because of the generosity, where we have access to more, mater more resources because people feel more cooperative with mm. us and so forth. Yeah. So there might not be our resources, but yeah. there's a cooperative yeah. towards a cause, you yes. know. And that's what we notice a lot. Like there's people who who come and say, you're doing this. We'd like to do it too. Can we join up with you? And yes. can we do this done and do that? And can we do that together? Yeah. Of course we can. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but if you hadn't have started it, yeah. nobody would come and do that. Yeah. You if know? you hadn't have decided I'm going to give what I have, mm. and I see this with you a lot, if you hadn't have decided, I'm going to give what I can and I'm going to give my all and I'm going to give not just financially, but of myself, of my resources, uh, of my time, of my energy, of mm. my creativity, mm. that desire in you has created a lot of attraction around us. I mean, we're sitting in this incredible studio. Which um, is a result of someone else's generosity. Yeah, someone else's generosity. And then the labor that went into it, there was a lot someone of generosity. generosity. We paid some people, but other people just donated their time, their time and yeah. resources. Yeah. Uh, and right now, there's a couple of lovely ladies sitting in there, like recording us and, mm. and doing all of that because... But that none of that could have occurred if you weren't first generous. That's right. In wanting to give this gift to others because... Yeah. The majority of people who contributed to this studio, for example, shared that desire to, to support the gift to others, yes. not to us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, this is the thing is that the generosity within yourself in, eventually attracts other people who are generous and eventually, you know, you can share your resources in such a way that it benefits the world. Yeah. That's what you can do. It's wonderful. Rather than just being selfish with them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, All you right. know. We, we were offered resources to actually build a house for ourselves yeah. because we have a one-bedroom little house. It's and, kind of an office yeah, as well. Yeah, it's also an office. <laughs> and, and your work um, workstation to build computers. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. our so, kitchen table yeah, that's most our of the time. Table a lot of time. <laughs> so, so, yeah, you know, and so they thought, oh, well, let's offer them some money to build a house. And we went back to them and said, look, we'd like to not use this build a house because our little one-bedroom house is fine. It's fine. And <laughs> Can we build a studio instead and use yeah. the money to for you know benefit the world instead? Yeah. You know, and so that's what we chose to do with it. Yeah. And that attracts people. That that causes people to go, wow, that's interesting. That's the way they use those funds, and mm. it wasn't for their own per personal benefit. And that also then brings, um, I suppose you could say, confidence and faith in people that you can work together for the benefit of others rather than for for being, for selfish reasons yeah and that yeah. that has a positive benefit too yeah mm. yeah all right so again we just want to remind our viewers that all results will be proportionate to the extent of my sincere desire and actions to give generously mm. if i only give generously to people in my family or based on the desire to receive something from others 
then that's not a true state of generosity within no. me. And I will receive no positive compensation. Instead, when you say positive I will conversation, receive, you will always receive positive yes, conversation. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll receive no uh, rewards-based rewards. compensation. It'll be corrective. It, it, instead, I'll receive correction. Yes. And, yeah. and because the, the attitude of just giving to family is a very, very selfish one. Yes. And it's motivated specifically by this concept of inequality. Yes. The lack of equality well, it, between people. Inherent in that desire is an is established belief in in inequality. no equality. Yeah. And and so what we what we're doing now mm-hmm. is we're sharing our resources with people who are attached to us in some yes. way which is a very selfish act actually yeah. to do. And I see a lot of people doing it. Of mm. course, everybody, it seems almost that you meet do, does this. Does it. It's very rare for a person to have a family and then leave the, their money to someone other than their family, yeah. unless they're angry with their family. Yes. And of course they do it all the time. But yeah. you know, if they love their family, what do they do? They always give the money to their family, yeah. notwithstanding how their family would use yeah. that, that, yeah. those funds. And this is a problem. Like yes. God, God sees that as a lack of equality, yeah. a lack of desire to see everyone on the planet as my brothers and sisters, mm-hmm. and therefore needs to be corrected. Yeah. And so God will see that as a need for correction, yes. not, not a reward. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. yeah. So we have to keep that in mind. Yes. It's always proportionate to the attitude, the yeah. truth of the attitude. And what is motivating our yeah. desire to do things. Yes. It has a large bearing on how the compensatory effects work. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to look at it on the flip side. Yep. Proportionate compensation applied to the condition of stinginess. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what proportionate compensation will I receive if I guard my resources, don't share them, and I don't have any desire to give to others, or I'll only give to others under certain circumstances? Mm-hmm. There's some very, very strong ways in which we're breaking God's laws here. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not treating people as equals. Yep. Right. We, are, we have a complete lack of faith in God and God's laws and God's truth. Because mm-hmm. if we had faith in God's laws God's, and God's truth, we'd go, if, I, if I'm generous, I'll, I'll, I'll be looked after. Yes. You know? And you said we're not seeing ourselves as equal because we see ourselves as more important in, than others. We say, I've got to guard it for me. I don't want anyone else. Yeah, to. me having money is more important than you having money. Yes. And it's not. <laughs> From yeah, God's perspective, yeah. it's not. It's not more important for some people to have money on the planet and other people to have none from God's perspective. Yeah. From God's perspective, we should all have a fairly equal distribution of it. Of course, that's not going to be the case while people act differently. So mm-hmm. some people are willing to put in more effort, so they'll yeah. be compensated for that yeah, effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way the law works. Yeah. And that's a natural thing. And that's a good thing yeah. that it works that way. But there's plenty of people who put in uh, long efforts every single day and are never rewarded because other people want to be stingy. Mm. And and I see the uh, I see a stingy attitude myself as a very very severe injury, mm. very severe mm. injury, and yet it is very common, very common attitude that we see on the planet amongst people. Yeah, well, let me read through the list of attitudes. Just mm-hmm. to, to you've mentioned a couple of them, but a lack of faith in God's laws. Yep. A lack of love for others and an in unequal viewpoint of self. And also a lack of love for God. Because yes. these are God's children. And we're just saying, oh, I'm yeah. more important than you. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. How's that loving God? It's not loving God. You're yes. saying to God, oh, I'm a better child than that child. Exactly. Know? So yeah. that, that's not a very way, good way to even treat God, yes. let alone cho- uh, God's children. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it also indicates a feeling of entitlement to what I have. When yes. I'm guarding what I have, I think, no, I'm entitled to this. I deserve it. It's not acknowledging the gifts I've already received in order to have the resources that I have. Mm. Nobody on earth has resources of any kind without first receiving some of them as a gift or as being given to them by yeah, somebody else. Even just intelligence that allows you to create something is a gift from God. Right? Exactly. Um, but let's look at a lot of people who've got gifts of fi- pro- property, finances, yeah. they've got gifts of, uh, you know, specific skills and other things that have happened over a period of time. And these are all things that they could give to others. Yes. If they chose to. Yes. If and they, if they really saw loved it, others. If they saw that they weren't... They, see, people have these things and they think that's mine, I own it. But 
that's not acknowledging yeah. where these things came from, is and it? And it's also not uh, honest either, because it, the reality is we're all temporary residents of the earth. Yes, you know, even of this we, body. Yeah, we come and we go. Yeah. yeah, and 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 so the earth itself is not our property. Yeah, all we are is caretakers. Yeah, and and if we do a poor job caretaking, the next generation suffers. Yeah, not not our generation. Mm -hmm. So we might do a do a job of raping the earth and pillaging it you know in terms of taking all of its resources mm -hmm. I, I, to benefit ourselves only to be the detriment to the next generation yeah absolutely. and and these are god, god looks at these kind of behavior and says yeah you're not loving people yeah. here this is a complete lack of love right yeah. and uh, so naturally the compensatory effects are going to be quite severe severe mm. yes um, I've already mentioned feeling of ownership of what over what I have, so mm -hmm. not acknowledgement, no acknowledgement of the system that exists enable me to re that enables me to receive resources, which you've just touched on with the earth. Yeah. Um, it could be that I have a fear of not having enough for myself, or it could be that I'm just selfish. Yeah, and most people don't have fear about not having enough; they have anger about not having enough. Yes, like yes. that's the reality. Um, so, you know, they call it fear because it sounds better. Yeah. But the reality <laughs> is they are angry about not having yeah. enough. And they. <laughs> and we already talked that. about in one of our previous examples on fear about the problem with seeing fear as a good excuse. Because it's not even, even if it is just fear. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And also within this attitude means that we're constantly preoccupied with resources and... Rather than, uh, people. rather than people or rather or love. than regard for love and truth and things yeah. like that. Yeah. No, it's a terrible thing. Yeah. You see these people doing it all the time, you know, instead of caring for themselves or another person and saying, oh, you don't have to do that work. If I just paid a bit of money here and we hired the machine to do the work, then we wouldn't have to do the work. And then yeah. everyone would benefit, right? Yeah. We're benefiting from the effort of another making the machine. Yes. But no, they don't want to pay the money because paying the money means they'll have less money and so yeah, forth. Yeah. So you've got to work your guts out and work hard. And yeah. do it. It's all very, very unloving behaviour because we have the resource to do something completely different, mm. but we're not going to do it. Yes. Why, why is that? Because we're being basically selfish Stingy. and we're waiting. Yeah. We're wanting people to pay for our selfishness. Yes. We're wanting people to, you know, to have to pay the cost of it. Yeah. It, it's a terrible, terrible attitude, mm. stinginess. And oh, honestly, it's, uh, it, it is so anti-God that I can't <laughs> emphasize enough, you know, because God is so generous. It's another great T-shirt, stingy equals anti-God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a terrible, terrible attitude. I find people who are stingy very hard to deal with as well because they always have ulterior motives in They're almost every decision and choice yes. they make. Yeah. And love doesn't motivate them. Yeah. Stinginess does. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, let's look at the compensation that is incurred yep. through a stingy attitude. And we have to say again that... It's going to be quite severe. The, yeah, it's, going to be, it's a biggie. It's another biggie. Yeah. So there's going to be a fair amount of compensation because um, compensation is proportionate to how big an issue it is really it's yeah. it's like well, and it's a big attitude it's problem. a big attitude problem and yeah. then if i'm extremely stingy in all aspects of my life this compensation we're going to talk about is going to be extreme you know yeah, yeah. and bear in mind that that while i may have the money mm -hmm. once i arrive in the spirit world i am going to be devastated by the amount of damage i've done to my soul yeah so you see this is where most people on earth don't measure the compensation because yeah. they can ignore it to a large degree yeah. by maintaining a lifestyle and a life that is in complete disharmony with God's laws on the matter. Mm. But as soon as you pass, that's not going to be possible. No. If you are stingy on this earth, you're going to end up in a very, very stingy environment in the spirit world. And you're going to really struggle, mm -hmm. really struggle to survive as yeah. a result. You, 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 you will be constantly unhappy. And and until you see that where you're at is because of your stinginess on earth, mm. you're going to be very, very unhappy. Yeah. Uh, like, so, so it's, a terrible, it's a terrible thing to do on the planet, besides mm. the fact that we are personally now responsible for the lack of others. 
yes. because we are not being generous. We, yes. When we have more than others and we are not generous with what we have, we are personally responsible for the lack in others. Yes. And, and that it means that their hardships, their life, and in many cases, they die because of their lack mm. when they don't need to. Mm. You know, we see 50 million children around about every year dry, dying of starvation mm. on the planet. Why is that? Because of the rest of our stinginess yes. is where, what what's about. Yeah. Right. So there's millions of people dying every year because mm. of our stinginess, mm. literally. Literally. And and you know we yeah. bear the consequence yes. of that. We do. Part of the compensation is that we experience personal lack really in a lot of areas in our life we're not close to people all we can think about is our resources we're not yeah. we're not uh, contributing to anything good because all we can think about is our resources yeah. we contribute to global problems of lack yeah. um, and that's a part of the compensation people are repelled by our selfish attitude because it is selfish no matter what the reason it's no matter selfish. what you call it yeah it's selfish <laughs> yep. in the end yep yep we're going to be very unhappy. We're going to be alone and unhappy, basically. Well, we may think we're happy because we've got all the resources to create yeah. happiness. But like I said, once all those resources are no longer <laughs> available, which is the instant you die, yeah. you're going to go from thinking you're happy to being yeah. absolutely miserable. And I don't <laughs> feel you can be in a true state of happiness if your happiness is dependent upon something external to you. Or dependent upon destroying other people's happiness. Yes, that's right. And when you're stingy... You are dependent on destroying other people's happiness and you are dependent on having a certain num level of resources in order to feel happy. Right. So both of those things mean that you're not actually experiencing real happiness. If those resources were taken away, how are you going to feel? Yeah. And they're going to be taken away they are. as soon as you pass. Yeah. Bang. <laughs> yep. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. You think, you're going to think that you don't care. Yeah. But you will. <laughs> you can't go from caring, 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 caring so much every single day of your life. Yeah. And whether you're thinking about caring. it consciously every day of your life, I know a lot of stingy people who are just living in it. It's not even a conscious thought anymore because it's just it's a so part natural. of it's natural. their soul condition that they keep yeah. acting in and keep acting in and keep acting in. They think it's logical yeah. what they're doing. And you can't go from that state one day and then have your physical body pass. You keep living and a uh, physical body die and you pass into the spirit world and then you suddenly are going to not have that preoccupation, of course you're going to have it. Yeah. Yeah, very destructive Very attitude. destructive. And uh, for it's going to end up in some pretty, pretty strong compensatory corrections. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Mark your words. <laughs> All right, let's best, move best on. Best to do with the emotions while you're on earth. Definitely. Get rid of the stingy attitude. Definitely. Challenge it through yes. your actions. That's right. Better, better to do that. Yeah. Mm. Okay, let's move on to our next example. <laughs> <laughs> Proportionate compensation for embracing personal commitment. So here I'd like to ask you about what kinds of compensation and the proportionate compensation I'll receive if I commit myself fully to a loving endeavor of any kind. Hmm. Yeah, there's some good attitudes here, isn't there? Because yes. I, when I'm truly committed to something, and, and let's assume it's not an evil thing. Here. No, a let's, loving, let's we assume, need to qualify. Let's, let's assume yeah. it's a loving thing. Yeah. Of course, I can be committed to an evil thing too. Yes. <laughs> that can be very destructive. But um, let's say I'm truly committed to a loving thing, a loving course of action. Mm -hmm then highly likely I'm going to use all my resources, all my time, all my energy, all my effort uh, to a large degree in making that thing a reality. Yeah, and uh, That's the, the, I will. If I'm committed, I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah. And, and because I've now made it a reality, it, obviously not only myself but others will benefit from that reality. Yes. And also when I'm fully committed, it means that... Uh, I'm going to feel any fear involved in executing what I want to do. And this, this comes back to where we spoke in our first example about courageousness. If I'm fully committed, I will be courageous. Mm. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm not courageous, I'm not fully committed. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Fear is influencing my decisions rather than my desire. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'll also be willing to make mistakes. Yes. Um, Which means I'm humble to mistakes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And um, 
I I want to be exposed. I want to tell people. I want to be transparent about this desire that I have. Yes, you won't be hiding it under a you know under a blanket or something. No. You know, you're out there saying, yes. oh, "This is what I'm going to do." I'm, I'm going to do it. And who can gonna, I do it? Let's and, get it done. And, and you I'm don't just do talk this. about it either. No. I see a lot of people just yeah, talking yeah. about things like yabba 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 yeah. yabba, <laughs> <laughs> and and you go away in a year time. You come back. That's still yabby, yabby, yes. yabby, yabby, yabby. Yeah. Have you done anything? No. Yeah. You know, you go away five years' time, yeah. come back. Yabby, yabby, yabby. Still talking about the same thing. <laughs> yeah. But no action. Yeah. It's not commitment. No, it's not commitment. No. Um, and if I am committed, then I'm going to take responsibility, as you just said, for creating what I want to do. Yeah. I, I am I not going to wait yeah. for other people to come along and go, yeah. I will help you. Yeah. I'm not going to say... I'm not going to wait for everyone around me to go, oh, yeah, we agree. That's a great thing. Yeah. I'm not going to go and talk to people yeah. trying to get their agreement that it's a great thing. Or get them to help it, me or, or get them to do the yeah, work. I'll or... go ahead and do it and people will join me because they'll notice my attitude and they'll like that. Yes. So basically, when I'm really committed to something, I have a strong, my attitude displays a lot of humility, mm. a lot of um, willingness to act, doesn't it? Yes. So we already know from our discussions that they are both very positive things. Yeah, a lot of good attitudes here. Yes. Again. So let's look at what our compensation will be. Mm -hmm. um, keeping in mind that these results are going to be proportionate to the extent of oh. my sincere commitment and actions in harmony with love. Yeah, so I'm just a tiny bit committed. Is Which there, is sort of, that's an oxymoron. Exactly. Yes. Is there such a thing as like the whole whole chicken and... and uh, um, uh, what is that thing Chicken we and say? pig commitment. Yes, <laughs> to the discussion. bacon and eggs. To yeah. the bacon and eggs. Yeah. The bacon, the, the pig was truly committed. Yes. <laughs> he had to die for it. Yeah. The chicken just had to lay the egg. Yeah, that's <laughs> all right. So not very committed. No. And frequently we are chickens when it comes to our so-called commitments we, we, yes. we think just laying an egg and yes. <laughs> moving on our way is going to get the job done it's not you know a lot of yeah. times we've got to put our life into it yeah. and i don't mean dying for it i mean no. put your life your whole everything you've got it. your attention your desire your resources your yeah. actions everything that's yeah. commitment not not sacrificing love of self through it no. but, but putting everything into it yeah mm. yeah and uh okay so let's talk about uh what kind of compensation i'm going to experience mm -hmm. So something I notice is that I learn more quickly whenever I fully commit to any endeavour. Yes. Desires engage, so I feel more emotions, I receive more feedback from God's laws um, and from God. Yeah. And that's a huge positive conversation for me. I'm learning and I like learning. Yeah. 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 And you, you're willing to sort of experiment too, aren't you, to, in your creation process? You, yes. You sort of go, okay. You know, if I make a mistake, I make a mistake, but I'm just going to you know, go ahead and do this thing that I want to do. But, you know, I'll work through my mistakes as I'm doing it. <laughs> and and that, that willingness to experiment means that I receive more truth. And that is a positive compensation. Yeah. yeah. And, and I might have to correct a few things here and there as I work through mm -hmm. that. But isn't that good? <laughs> it is. But the reward is that I have more personal truth and global truth, universal truth. Available to available me. Available to me. And, and in a more rapid way. Yes, much more rapid. Like yep. we're talking this to this, yeah. like really big changes. Yeah. 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 All of God's laws are going to support me. Yep. They love people. God's laws love desire. <laughs> yes. And people willing to commit. <laughs> people willing to commit to their desires. I'm going to receive assistance from loving people and spirits. Yep. People are attracted to people of commitment. Mm -hmm. I will have personal joy, self-esteem, self-worth, self-respect. Because yeah, I know I'm doing the right thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also there's a certain compensatory reward, isn't there, where I say, I love this thing, I want to do it, it's yeah. in harmony with love and I'm going for it. And at the end of the day, it. I did it. Like and, I, yeah. I did or going, I'm in the throes of doing it. I did it. do it. Yeah. You know, I, I put in the effort and I got the job done type yeah. of thing and you feel good about yourself doing, doing that. that. Doing mm. that. You do. Um... I'm going to have greater self-awareness and also I'm going to discover more about my real personality and my real nature. Yeah, and self-awareness is, a, is a, a, a very important thing yes. in the long run. Yeah. You need to know what your desires are and what your passions are and what your personality enjoys yeah. and things like that. And you're not going to know that if you just sit on your backside and do nothing. 
No, and, and I, I, I think back to a lot of times in seminars where people have put up their hand and said, well, could you tell me my passion and desire? Or, well, I don't really know. Or, it's too hard for me to know my passion and desire or my personality. But what is that? And really here we're saying, well, you commit to a loving endeavor, you're going to learn about that pretty, pretty rapidly. rapidly. Yeah. 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 Um, we're also going to have personal satisfaction that I did everything I could to bring about a loving result. Mm. No matter what the purpose of what I was doing, if it was and loving. I, and I wasn't impeded by unloving things going on around me. Yeah. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't afraid of all that. I wasn't just went listening ahead. to fear. Yeah, I just went ahead and did the loving thing anyway because yeah. it's a loving thing. Yes. Yeah. And that, that gives you a real sense of you can handle anything as well. Like, yeah. So you, you get less fear as a result of that too. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And if I am humble and modify my efforts based on the feedback I receive through the process that I've engaged by being committed, mm. then the positive compensation will compound in harmony with the love and truth I bring myself in harmony with. Yeah. 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 So, so not only does it, you know, it, 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 if I have to take the opportunity to feel my feelings is what we're saying, mm. no matter what, and mm. instead of dumping them on others, now, now I've got opportunities to learn left, right and centre because I'm engaging desire, feeling my feelings, letting go bad yes. emotions and, and unloving emotions as I go. Mm -hmm. Now, I've, you know, I've got the chance of progressing towards God and towards truth and towards love very rapidly. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So now let's just give a few clarifiers and you can comment on these if you desire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, about the proportionate aspects of mm -hmm. this situation. So if I commit my entire heart to every project I undertake, I'll receive many compensatory benefits in all areas of my life. Yeah. And that's the proportionate. I'm doing it in every case where it's loving, I go for it. And therefore, I just have so much in my whole life is changed and I'm feeling great. Yeah, you have a rich you, you rich, could say a rich life yes. is probably the way that yeah it's not learn. always like yay happy but there's well there's high likelihood of being yeah. happy because you're letting go of your negative emotions as you yes. go and you're living in desire and passion so it's a higher likelihood of being happy yes but you're confronting fear you're confronting you're forgiving and repenting basically continually yeah, yeah. yeah. okay um however if i only commit fully for a short time Yes, which, which you see I a lot. See that happen a lot. Yeah. Most people commit for a short time until their fear is hit. Yes. And then when their fear is hit, that's it. All bets yeah. are off after that. That's right. Mm. So for a short time or to a limited project, which is what a lot of people do in terms of their avoidance of fear. Yeah, and the reason why they do that is they, they sort of like this project. Yeah. It's sort of like it's easy for them. Yeah. They get a lot of addictions met by doing this yeah, project, yeah. so they commit to that. Yes. Hmm. Or, you know, we have people around us who are like, look, I really want to support and work towards these aims, but I uh, can't just, this is what I'd really like to do, but that's I can't do too it. scary and big, so I'm just going to do this smaller project yeah. and commit to that. Yeah. Or, um, or I really want to do this, but my husband doesn't like the idea. Yeah. Exactly. There's That's a, another a example one. where other people around us may not like our ideas or our concepts. Yep. And instead of uh, engaging our loving desire, we just listen to them. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Or if we're half hearted, so we commit in one small area to a limited project, say, but then we're half hearted about everything else in all the other areas of our life. So yep. in any of these cases that I've just said, then I'm going to receive very few compensatory benefits. And many of my projects will remain unfinished and only really as ideas. It's incomplete. There's not a lot of, po and there's not a lot of positive or rewarding compensation. No, in fact, there'll be a lot of penalties. And, and yeah. as a result of that, you sort of come away going, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Oh, you know, like yeah. a person who's truly committed doesn't ever do that. No. They, they, they go, oh, this is a really good idea. We're doing it. Yes. And, and nothing stops them. No. And you, you, when you meet people like that, you can see, yeah, you, I can understand why you're a successful person yes. because nothing stopped you going ahead and doing, doing what you it. desired you to do. You're committed to it. You yeah. can, you're truly, truly committed all your heart to, yeah. to the project. Yeah. And you can see also why God, it, 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 being lukewarm is almost worse than being hot or cold. Yes. You know, it's like a drink, isn't it? Like, yeah. You know, 
if you have a hot tea, it's yeah. okay. You have a cold tea, that's okay too. Yeah. Iced tea is, is yeah, nice. Yeah. But if you have a lukewarm tea, how many people like drinking yeah. that? It's like they either want to heat it up or cool it down, right? And and this well, is a trouble with a lukewarm person. Yes. A person who just is, you know, little bits of thing. It's not true commitment. No. It, it's it's really addiction. You know, they yeah. just do something because they want other addictions met. Yes. So there's no real commitment there at all. And any person who's lukewarm does not have any real commitment at all. No. And uh, as a result, there'll be no positive rewards. So there's only going to be the compensatory positive uh, corrections yes. uh, for their behaviour, that's all. Well, that probably leads us to our next example, which deals with exactly that. Good. So let's do that. Mm -hmm. Proportionate compensation applied to personal hesitancy. I was thinking of the word hesitancy here in our topic. Yes. You know, maybe it's poorly chosen and we need to use other words, but hesitancy in a way is what people are, aren't they? It's sort of like, oh, I'm going to do this, I will talk about doing this, yeah, or yeah. I rave on it that I'm yeah. going to do this, or I'm going to... You know, or I'm I'll gonna, take a little step that I'm, I'm gonna, back gonna, again. I'm going to, going to, going to, going to. Yeah, you know, and I'm forward, and, back, forward, back, but no actual movement but, is happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a year later, they're still going. I go for years. it, then I hesitate. Yeah. I go for, hesitate. What happened to that project that you were doing? Through? Oh, well, you know, yeah. it didn't work out really. And, you know, yeah. it had this problem and that. Or I've done a little bit, but, you know, uh, we're still But I had this problem and, and that yeah. problem and I, so I've decided to give it up, you yeah. know. Yeah. yeah, that kind of thing. That's what I was aiming at with the word. Which is very common. Yes. Very common. Because remember here, we're contrasting with our previous example, which was all about commitment. Yes. I'm going for it. That's it. I'm. I'm already. I can't even talk to you more about it because I've got to get on with it. You that's know. Right. Yeah. Whereas hesitancy, there's a lot of all that. I was trying to capture this sort of everything you just expressed, basically. Yeah, and there's a lot of reasons or attitudes for yes. it, isn't there? there yes. So things, let, let's talk about them. Yeah. So yeah. Let, the, some of the attitudes are. Um, look, one attitude I see a lot in this hesitancy is I want everybody to share yeah. with me in what I think is a great idea. And yeah. you've got to think it's a great idea too. Yes. And if you don't think it's a great idea, yeah. then I'm not getting approval from you anymore. Yes. So now I'm not going to do it because yes. it's not, you know. Because really approval is more important to me than the than project. The idea. Yeah. Yeah. Or the yeah. project. Yes. And uh, in other words, I'm being driven by addiction. Yes. To come up with this idea. And I'm often just so needy, 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 needy. Give me. Please help me. Please. Uh, how do I do yeah. this? What yeah. do I do? Yeah. You know, yeah. like. Could and you this tell is, me I'm good doing this? Yeah. yeah. This is where a lot of people also engage lawyers and accountants and a yeah, lot of yeah, other yeah. people, you know, because they're really terrified of just getting the job done themselves yes. or working through the issues or learning about those things themselves. Yeah. And so they need the support and security. And of course, a lot of lawyers and accountants are in a lot of fear as well because they do. Yeah with the law or whatever every day and they're yep. petrified of it so yep. they impose all their fears yeah, on top yeah. of you so that makes you more scared than you were before you went in yeah <laughs> and it's all a big uh, uh, feeding frenzy of addictions yeah. really the yeah. whole inter exchange yeah. yeah so there's a lot of that going on um we're also basically we're living in fear and we did a whole example on that and mm. how negative that is and what's actually going on in that attitude mm we end up placing the burden on other people to take action and make decisions yeah. no matter what it's about we're not going to make the decision we're not going to take action so all that leaves is for other people to do it that's right so, so that's quite unloving towards others isn't it what i find is nobody wants to be an indian and nobody wants to be a leader <laughs> when i say by that i, I mean an indian in the sense of Nobody wants to actually do the work, actually yeah. be strong enough to yeah. go ahead and yeah. do yeah. the actual work. Yeah, yeah. You know, they want somebody else to do that yeah. because they might get, you know, pulled down because of it, whatever. Yeah. So nobody wants to be the worker. Yes. And then nobody wants to be the, the leader yeah. either because he might get into trouble and other yes. people might not like him and other yeah. people yeah. might want to destroy him and everything. So nobody wants to be the leader yeah. either. Yeah. You know, yeah. the yeah. chief the of, chief. The, yeah. of the Indian, if, yeah. Indians, yeah. if you like. Nobody wants to be the chief. And so what are you left with? A whole rabble yes. of most people doing nothing productive. Yeah. <laughs> and it's amazing sometimes. If it wasn't for money on the planet, yeah. most things on this planet would Who never knows? get done. That's so another fear <laughs> that we talked about earlier about the fear of lack and stinginess actually creates production on the planet and, and unfortunately it's it. one of the only things yeah. it does it's sort of like we all got to work to eat so and we've all got to work to have fun we've all got to work so let's go ahead and work because yeah. we're going to get paid for it yeah. right Sad, and this is what it? we yeah. find when volunteers come it's yeah. very it's a huge it's shift different. for them very from different. from this 
payment method, you know, mentality and from this, I'll only do a set amount of work, only mm-hmm. a limited amount of work. Anything that doesn't challenge my fear. Yeah, or I'll only do the things I enjoy. Or if you give me attention while I do it. Or I'll do it then. If you yeah. if I get some personal Validate reward. me in some way. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you take all that away from them yeah. and there's no motivation to get anything done. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. And that's a big problem. On it's the a big problem. Mm. And this is basically what we're saying. This hesitancy and this neediness and all of this is all kind of wrapped up in this. Yes. There also, there's a lack of faith in God's laws, which we've talked about when we talked about living in fear, which yeah. is essentially what we're doing here. Exactly. Uh, an unwillingness to make mistakes, expose self, risk, any of these things that we saw in the Have commitment example. Have others pull example. you down, attack you, belittle yep. you, make fun of you, think that what you're doing is stupid and all those other things. We're just unwilling to feel most emotions, let's most face it. Most emotions. And we don't even <laughs> want to expose ourselves. No. We yeah. don't want to show our true colours. No, we just want to fly under the radar. And because if we were willing to expose ourselves more, we might commit more to what's going on. But no, we don't want to. We want to hesitate. That's where we're at. So we're not... We're, we're basically living in fear. Mm. Yeah. So we're people who talk a lot without doing much. Yeah, that's basically what we're talking about. And this is what I notice a lot too, is people love talking about what they do, but do they actually do it? (laughs) Not very much. (laughs) They don't get much done. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) All right. So let's just briefly touch on the proportionate compensation because a lot of this we've covered in Mm. the fear example. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about a few of the ones we might not have mentioned. We limit our learning quite severely. We actually can't learn because we're not, we're not desiring, we're not acting, we're not, we're not doing, we're not feeling, we're not doing anything that would encourage us to learn. Yeah, a lot of learning comes from experience, doesn't it? It does. And, and experience is a great teacher. Yeah. And if you're willing, unwilling to have experiences, yes. how can you learn? Because as soon as we experience something we engage with an experience we engage with god's laws Mm. automatically Mm. in a much more direct way Mm. of course just sitting here doing nothing god's laws are acting upon me but as soon as i choose to do something well then there's more of my self and my desire and my uh Mm. engagement and so god's laws boom i'm more sensitive to what's going on yeah you can you can think about things and you can talk about things yes but it's not until you engage things you know, and this is what I That's notice the, a lot with divine yeah, truth with people. Definitely. They think about it and they talk about it. Yeah. But they don't engage it. Right. So how are you ever going to really understand it? Yeah. You, you can't. And you, you know the difference between people who have talked about a thing and people who've engaged it. And it goes the same for divine truth. Yeah. There's just, it's a different quality of conversation or experience yeah. engagement. And there's a true them. emotional understanding yeah. of what's going on rather yeah. than just an idea or concept. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we don't ha- being hesitant and non-committal leads to very few changes in my life. Yeah, and so we have a boring, boring dull, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. uninteresting life. Yeah, which is one of the compensatory drawbacks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I live in dread of day-to-day decisions. Basically, when I've got this soul condition. Yeah, every decision becomes a mountain mm-hmm. that you're unwilling to climb. Yeah. You know, so every decision you go, I don't want to make that. I don't want to make that. Exactly. You know. And it, and it's a terrible place to live in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done that in a lot of areas, and it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. you can put, you can waste huge amounts of your life doing that. Mm-hmm. I've seen people waste decades, and yes. some people centuries of their yeah. life just because they live in dread of anything. Mm. 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 Uh, it erodes our self worth and our self respect if we had any, you know, because mm. we just we just know that we're not doing anything no we know our conscience is telling us and that's our next session or, yeah yeah but not only that we also have this feeling don't we uh, uh, that nothing i do is ever going to turn out because i don't have the commitment to make it turn out yeah we just know <laughs> it can't happen because i'm not going to do it and mm. we we live with that knowledge mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah um we it's impossible to know our true self and our true soul condition really because we're actively fighting that process yeah, we, we're not going to finish up knowing ourselves. Mm. And uh, and so we're basically living our life in a complete facade governed by fear yeah. in this state. Yeah. And what who, who can benefit from that? Not any of your friends, not any, not a partner, and not yourself. Mm-mm. You can't have a relationship with God either like Mm-mm. that, you know. So, so who's actually benefiting from your life now? Yeah. 
N not even you. No. You know, and you know you'd be far better off just making some choice and decisions to fully commit to things. Yeah. Even if you're uncertain that they're loving. Yes. Then you would to not commit to anything because of uncertainty. Yeah. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And we end up being alone because people are quite repelled by the. It, it's quite a needy. Yeah, um, and exhausting to be with people. Dependent, who, and it's, we're very dependent, aren't we, on others? Because we're not creating for ourselves. Yeah, it's a very a lot of addictions need to be yeah. fed in this place. Yeah. But also, it's a very it's a very much a place where other people can after a while they can sort of feel our lack of sincerity. Yeah. And after a while they go, yeah, you talk a lot, but you don't yeah. really do much, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like. Yeah, so, or there's always, you've always got an excuse for why things aren't yeah, happening. Yeah, or why yeah. things aren't good, you know, yeah. like, and, and it and it doesn't feel good to be yeah. with those kind of people. No. Most people will withdraw. Yeah. Yep. And of course, there's lots of other negative consequences for ourselves, for our environment, for the people around us. Mm. Uh, that's just a few. Yeah. Obviously, everything we've said is this whole session is about the can measure it or the proportionate aspect of this so yeah. those things happen proportionate to how much we live in that attitude and we uh, engender that attitude in others and we foster that attitude within ourselves then the compensation will be applied to proportionately to that yes but again the hesitancy is interesting isn't it because it's sort of like if you're hesitant in one thing it's likely you're going to be hesitant yes. in many things yes. because it's often driven by the same emotional condition the underlying. underlying justification for the state is there that's right yeah so so usually a person who's hesitant in a lot of things they might have a lot of good ideas and a lot of good concepts and everything else yeah but as a result they never really experience the joy of any of them really coming yeah. off you know yeah absolutely because they're hesitant in all these yes. in so many avenues of their life not just one yeah it's very rare to find a person who's hesitant in one and then and and fully committed in all the others you that's know? right mm. yeah yeah so it's another biggie really it's another biggie and very negative uh, in terms of our personal happiness there's a lot of correction needed by god and so uh, a compensation is yeah. going to be fairly yeah big. it's going to be a lot of corrective compensation mm. for, sting, for for this uh, for this attitude of with similar with lack of, of hesitancy, hesitancy. lack and of you've... courage to go ahead and commit to something yeah mm. and you you nearly said stinginess there and it's very similar to the stingy it stage. is we are hesitancy causes you to be stingy in, yeah. in, a, in as a byproduct yeah it does. Yeah, it does. You, you sort of go to act and then you go, oh, should I act? Mm. <laughs> you know and what I mean? And so you things. never act. Yeah. You know, it's the same with giving away yeah. your funds or whatever. Oh, I go to act and then you go, oh, but if I have something yeah. bad happen further up, I might need this, so yeah. I keep it to myself. Yeah. It, it, they're very linked to each other, stinginess yeah. and hesitancy. Yeah. 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 Mm. All right. Thank you.